Hello everyone, today we're going to set up a FreeRadius server. FreeRadius is a AAA authentication and accounting and access uh, server that controls and verifies access from various network devices and uh, Wi-Fi access points and clients and it can be integrated with a myriad of network uh, devices such as switches or VPN providers or ISPs. And it's very common and the chances are you've probably used this uh, unbeknownst when you're you know logged on to a, a wi-fi connection or a vpn service from one of the popular providers so we've set up a small ubuntu 20 box on digit lotion we're going to install free radius today with a mysql backend and a dallow radius web gui then we're going to run through configuring our, our devices. In this case, we're gonna use a ubiquity access point as a, a test device. We're gonna add some clients to that. We're gonna add a mobile client and a desktop client and authenticate using the Radius server uh, to show you how this works. And again, this is applicable for lots of many devices that support uh, Radius. Okay, so as per usual, all the links will be in the description for everything we've used. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, we've provisioned an entry level Ubuntu 20 box and we're going to use apt to get the uh, initial prerequisites for the free radius install. So let's go. So you can see here we've SSH'd in and we've just uh, sudo apt install and we've a list of prerequisites there. Again, these are in the description below and we'll just hit yes here to continue and it runs through its install okay and then we're just going to install free radius free radius mysql on the utils as well here because we're going to use mysql as our database backend okay, this just takes a few seconds just to run through i'll cut out various sections here just to speed things up as well so we're just going to stop the free radius in and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a free radius minus x to just run it in debug mode to see the output and um, as you can see it successfully started so just press control and see and that'll stop and we're just going to enable it at boot okay so we're just going to do a sudo apt get install mysql server just going to do yes and then once that's loaded we're gonna do uh, mysql minus user root. There's no password on the default install. We're gonna change that now and uh, run the safe mysql script just to set a root password for it. We'll run the mysql underscore secure underscore installation script. And we're just gonna run through this and just set a default root password for our mysql instance. Okay, just confirm our password. Okay, and we're done. Just gonna remove the anonymous users and we're gonna get rid of the remote root logon. Now we're just going to log in with root using our updated mysql password here we're going to create our radius database initially a, a blank database and we'll populate this in a few seconds time uh, with some of the free radius install scripts and later on with the dallow radius scripts as well we're just going to do a create database uh, radius and then we're going to create a user called radius adm you can use any user you like here we're just going to give it a password as well and then we're going to grant privileges on everything for that user with the grant option i'm going to press ok i'm just going to exit out there after we flush privileges okay so we've set up our database it's blank we've added a mysql user for that to run under now we're going to run one of the sql mysql schema scripts to populate that database so these commands are in the description um, 
we've just gone mysql minus u or password and inputted the script and then we're going to edit the free radius mods available sql file to enter a couple of details we're going to set the engine to be mysql here and then we're going to scroll down a little bit further we're just going to set some additional parameters so the driver here we want to set for mysql here so we just uncomment this one and we'll comment the line above out Okay, and then a little bit further down, there's some more parameters here. There's some TLS entries here, which we're going to comment out. It's for MySQL communication. Uh, we're on the same box here, so this doesn't really apply in our case. And again, it's a demo system, so we're just going to comment these guys out. It's not needed in our scenario. And then down the bottom here. We have one more entry to change. Okay, so under the connection section here, we need to obviously put in our server, which in this case is localhost, the default port, and then our logon and our password. Here, this is the user we created earlier on, our radius ADM and the password we gave that user earlier on. Okay. And we just need to change that to our database name. If you've named it any different, it's just called radius, so we don't need to make any changes there. So now we're going to enable our SQL mod under the mods enabled. We're just going to add a sim link to it to just tell free radius that we're using the SQL module um, and we'll, it, it, it's going to be in mod enabled. Okay, we're just going to chown it uh, to free rad, that free rad, um, which is the user it runs under. And we're going to systemctl restart free radius. We've got no errors there, so it indicates it's probably started okay. We'll check that later on. So we'll just log in with our radius admin user we created and we'll just have a look to see if the database is there and it's populated now after we run our scripts just to be sure it should be. So we're going to use radius we'll show tables. Okay so you can see it's populated the tables there. Okay so we're just going to insert a test user here into the rad check table which is just a test table allows you just to check the authentication okay again all these commands are in the description below we've just created a, a test user literally with a, a clear text password if we just do a query we can see it's entered it into the table here and now what we're going to do is we're going to just run a, a command just to run free radius in interactive mode again with the minus x we're going to split the screens and on the top screen We've opened another shell and in the bottom screen we have our free radius sitting in interactive mode. And we're going to use a rad test, uh, which is a test utility that's built in uh, to test the user we've created just to make sure that the free radius server is up and it's authenticating at least locally initially. So we just enter this command here. You can see in yellow we've got an accept here and you can see the actual server output in the screen below where it's also uh, given us a bit more detail and it's accepted the, the authentication request and access. Okay, so we now know that our radius server is at least up running and accepting local requests. Okay, so now we're gonna download yeah, Dallow Free Radius. Okay, and this is the web front end for the Free Radius database. It just makes the administration of Free Radius a lot easier, a lot more straightforward. You can easily add uh, network access servers or clients and users via a, a web GUI. 
And if you were to operate at any sort of scale, you need a, a web front end like this or similar. Okay, so we've just downloaded it. We just need to install Apache here as well. So I just realized I'd forgotten to install it. No. There's also a couple of PHP dependencies as well. Um, we'll install in just a moment as well. Just for Zello Radius GUI. First, what we're going to do is we'll unzip the Zello Radius download into var ww html let's get that in there we'll give it the right permissions first okay so you can see we've unzipped it into var ww html in apache uh, it's owned by root so we'll just change this first to ww data so let's do a chant minus or ww hyphen data dot ww hyphen data var ww html dollar radius Okay, that's given it the correct permissions so Apache can access it. Now, we'll just do a clear. Okay, so we have two scripts we've got to import into our existing free radius database that we created earlier on. So you can see here, I've issued two commands here just to input the contents of the two SQL files. Again, these are in the description below, and that'll allow. The radius database to have the additional tables that dollar radius needs to run on top of free radius we're just going to change mod dollar radius conf.php file and now we're just going to edit it so we're going to scroll down and we're going to change a couple of parameters we're going to change the uh, user and password to what we created there earlier on there rather than and our password Okay, radius admin and our password. Database name is radius already, so we shouldn't need to change that. Okay, we'll just save that file. Okay, I'm just gonna restart free radius again. Okay, so we're just gonna add the couple of Apache PHP dependencies we forgot to add earlier on. So now, if we just go to our IP address slash dollar radius slash logon, you can see we have our web front end for our dollar radius. The default password is just radius, and um, we'll change that in a minute. And you can see the various tabs. You can also see in management, you can accounting, billing, GIS, you have a whole load of features in here. Again, I'll leave the, the links for the radius uh, and the dollar radius websites in the description and you can explore these in a bit more detail. Uh, we can see our NAS, which is our network access device. You can list your existing NASs or your new ones. We're going to be adding one, uh, which will be our local Wi-Fi access point on my LAN. Uh, it can be various other devices, obviously, as well. This is just for demonstration. And we're going to add a couple of users. netstat minus ANLP here just and um, we'll just verify that the two radius ports are there and they're listening which they are okay we're just going to check our UFW firewall it's not enabled yet so we are going to just turn our firewall on on the device because it is out on the web and we're just going to allow those two ports in and access to our HTTPS port and um, just from uh, my specific WAN IP address so that will just allow authentication uh, to be available for everyone and the administration just to be available from my static WAN address okay so first we're going to just jump onto our access point or our NAS as it's going to be known as in a dollar radius 
web front end. So we're just going to go down to settings and we're just going to set up a radius profile. So we just have two existing networks here where we are going to create a profile and then create a, a new wireless network uh, and assign it this profile after. So let's just go and uh, we'll select create new radius profile. Let's call it my radius server. I'm going to give it the IP address of our server out in DigitalOcean, which is our demo box we're working on at the moment. That's our radius server. And we'll leave it at the default port. And then we're going to give it a password. This is also um, a password we're going to enter in uh, when we create the NAS device on the web front end in a few minutes. So we're just going to enter that in. Just going to flick across here to our dollar radius box. We're going to go to NAS, uh, which is the, 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 the network authentication server, which is the device that's going to be passing the access uh, from the clients out through the device to the free radius server. So this is our access point. Uh, this address here is actually my one address at home. So that's the address it's going to come from. And again, here's the details we've entered in our radius profile on the access point to allow the access point to first auth to the free radius box. And then in turn, the users will pass authentication through that box, through the free radius server um, for authentication. Okay, so if we list our NAS, there's the NAS we've created. Uh, we'll just call it Unify AP. That's the secret password we've used. My one IP address is in as the, the auth uh, IP to allow communication from. So we're just gonna add a, a new user and we'll create a second one in a minute. One we'll use for mobile phone, uh, Wi-Fi authentication and one off my desktop as well, or laptop. Okay, so we're just gonna go. Leave just in the default groups. We don't need to add it to any other groups at this stage. This is just a demonstration. Okay, so there's our user. There's our test user, one, two, three, exclamation mark, password. Save the radius profile. See it's here. We've created our test Wi-Fi network. You can see it here. And now this device should be authorized as a NAS device on the free radius server. Okay, so I just want to point something else out here. You probably notice at the top here, we now are displaying our SSL padlock and we've got a fully qualified domain name associated um, with our dollar radius server. I added an A record to the DNS for this box and have ran, ran through the uh, Let's Encrypt installation uh, and set up uh, to put an SSL cert on the box. I haven't covered it here. There's a link in the description to a DigitalOcean tutorial that I followed. It'll just make the video too long and complicated if I add anything else in. So just in case you notice this, that's what it is. You can also see there's an additional test user one uh, that's here. So now we're going to get on with uh, just testing our authentication. Okay, so I've plugged my mobile phone in. You can see here on the right hand side that we have our test Wi-Fi network we created. Our PuTTY SSH session is open in the background. And we're just going to try and authenticate here using Peep. With the uh, username and password we created. So. We're going to say don't validate. We're not looking to deploy certificates to the client. Um, this is just demonstration purposes. You can absolutely do that and require each client to have a certificate in addition to the username and a password, uh, which is a secure way of doing things. But uh, again, this is just a demonstration. So it uh, just proves the point. OK, so you can see here that uh, we couldn't connect. So saying the password was invalid and you can also see that in the uh, output on the screen on the left. So let's just correct our error here. And we put in the proper password. And if I can spell test user correctly, just change that uh, for or for T. Okay, so we've test user one two three exclamation mark, which was the password we used. So now we should be able to connect and get authenticated. Okay, so you can see here, it's now telling us that we're authenticated. I've highlighted the actual 
output on the free radius server here as well where it says accept and you can see we can just browse the web using the uh, authenticated connection okay so in the next section we're just going to do the same thing uh, just on a windows 10 uh, laptop um, so we'll just show you here again it's the same procedure pretty much we'll use our other test user for this one so here's our test accounts we're getting prompted for our username and a password again this is passing to the wi-fi box uh, our ubiquity access point and uh, it's then authenticating through uh, to our free radius box out on the web again we're connected there's also a log of our access uh, we're coming through an authenticated or pre-authenticated device so it's a much secure and more scalable way um, especially when deployed with certificate authentication as well to uh, manage uh, wi-fi networks or uh, tie into other applications or devices that support radius authentication okay we've reached the end of the video thank you for watching please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description and also in the recommended video